The Art of the Pivot is brought to you by Signavio. Hello, Mark Jeffries here. Let me tell you about today's guest. Dominic Canuso is Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer for WSFS Financial Corporation. It's a multi-billion dollar financial services company headquartered in Philadelphia. Since joining WSFS, Dominic's been instrumental in executing and optimizing acquisitions that have expanded the bank's wealth, retail, and commercial footprint across the region. In 2019, his role expanded to include the executive leadership position of Cash Connect. It's a division of WSFS and one of the largest providers of ATMs and smart safe cash logistics in the nation. Oh, and by the way, he recently won the CFO of the Year Award from the Philadelphia Business Journal. Dominic Canuso, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Mark. Good to see you. Oh, and so where do we find you? Are you in Philly? So I'm in uh, a town called Glen Mills. It's about 30 minutes just outside of Philadelphia in between Philadelphia and Wilmington, which is our other headquarters for WSFIS. All right, fantastic. All right, well, let's get into it then. So WSFS, many of course are aware, but tell us a bit more about its footprint, its size, maybe the vision, and also define your customers for us. Sure, and first I just welcome you to call it WSFIS, our customers in our market knows us as WSFIS. It's a, it's a funny term, but it's endearing, and, and that's, that's how we're known. So um, first and foremost, WSFIS uh, was founded in 1832. So it's, in fact, one of the 10 oldest banks in the country, uh, which is really neat history for us. We're just under $14 billion in assets, uh, and we are a, a commercial bank uh, with a strong retail presence in the greater Philadelphia uh, market and uh, the state of Delaware. Uh, we, we've uh, really built our brand over uh, the last 30 years to be what we now are as the largest locally headquartered community bank in, uh, the, in the region. And um, just for background, Philadelphia is uh, the sixth largest populated market in the country and the fourth largest banking market in the country. And we are well positioned uh, to be the local bank. In addition to just being your traditional lending bank for uh, businesses in our region and uh, branch network for our retail customers, we have a couple national businesses as well, including Cash Connect, which you mentioned, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We also have a very um, strong wealth platform, uh, a trust and wealth platform that services nationwide uh, over $20 billion in assets under administration and $2 billion in assets under management, and then a uh, leasing uh, equipment leasing business as well. So very broad uh, business performance uh, and product services, both in our market, as you would expect from a community bank, but also uh, we service uh, businesses nationwide. Uh, you sound like a, a growing organization. There's so much to do with WSFIS, but also, of course, Cash Connect is something under your purview. I mentioned a few details, but what's your elevator pitch for that business and how is it related to, to the main organization? Yeah, sure. I actually call it one of the first fintechs. So while fintechs have uh, garnered, uh, you know, focus over the last ten years with new entrants providing services to customers uh, in the banking industry, Cash Connect was founded twenty years ago in house at Wisfis to provide both cash and cash logistics and services to ATM providers. So in the the last you know thirty years, as we know, a ATMs have. Um, grown tremendously. There's over a uh, half a million of them in the country, um, that, and many of them are non-bank owned. And so they are businesses that we call ISOs, independent sales organizations, that position these ATMs to provide cash uh, for, to generate the fee. And we provide the cash in those ATMs, including all of the logistics, armored carrier services, reconciliation, and optimization. And then one of our newer products is uh, the smart safes. So if you think about ATMs distributes cash into our marketplace, smart safes are a way of accepting cash at points of sale, particularly in retail and quick service restaurants. And what we've done is create a customized technology framework to um, facilitate the moving of this cash 
And at any point in time, we have $1.4 billion of cash through ATMs and smart safes that turns uh, about uh, 12 times a year. So it, in fact, almost $20 billion of cash moves through our system annually. So it's very unique. We're the second largest market share provider in this space. Most banks uh, do not participate in this, and it's a homegrown, um, innovative uh, business for us. Sounds like a great business. But let me ask you a question. The, the pandemic has ended up being a catalyst for so many things that were kind of happening anyway, speeding up change. Have you seen any change in the usage of cash over the last seven, eight months? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. One we get a lot, in fact, because I think we talk about um, banks going more digital and digital adoption. We all now bank on our phones. But I think there's a belief that as that grows, that cash goes away. And in fact, that's not necessarily the case. They both exist. And so we get the question a lot is, you're growing in a business that serves cash and isn't cash going away? And the, the answer is, it's not. So as a percentage of transactions, it's going down as other forms of transactions grow. But cash in absolute dollars and volumes is relatively flat to slightly growing, and we continue to take market share. So th that's the first and foremost. What is interesting is that the, the COVID environment absolutely tested this theory. And the, the statistics that I give to, to provide context is that in April, when 80% of the nation was in lockdown orders, if you will, or stay-at-home orders, ATM transactions were only down 40%. So 80% of the people were staying at home, not going out, but yet ATM withdrawals were only down 40% and the dollar amount was only down 35%, meaning people were taking out more. And it demonstrates how important cash is across the, the country to, to our customers uh, and, and to everyone. That is a fascinating insight, not just into your business, but into the economy as a whole. Thank you for that. Um, let's move on then. So your role at the organization, as I mentioned, includes big leadership responsibilities for the bank itself as CFO, as well, of course, as being the executive for Cash Connect. As a leader, I'm always fascinated by how people do this. How do you balance those two roles? Do they interact? Is it like a different day? You think, okay, today I'm all about Cash Connect. Yeah, so I, I wish it was by day. It's probably by meeting. Uh, so, the, but the first thing I would say is is what you've probably seen in business, the the CFO role has become less about the traditional accounting and treasury and functional responsibilities, and more from a strategic business partner driving and growing and making investment decisions. So, for me, I'm not a CPA. I'm a CFA charter holder. I, my, you know, my pedigree was business consulting. So it, it was always tangential for me to be both a CFO and a business partner to drive businesses forward. Uh, and, and the truth is, I've, they're both fun. So as a CFO that has to have that role, you're wearing a lot of hats. So for me, shifting over to more of a GM style role at Cash Connect, it's just wearing those hats a little bit heavier at times. Uh, the, the challenge is taking one off and the other back on from meeting to meeting. Um, but it's it's a tremendous amount of fun. Uh, it, it, it it provides you know uh, opportunity for both teams to really step up uh, for the the leadership teams there and all of our associates. Given that I I am kind of working both roles off and on. Very, it's very interesting that you can actually do that and it just works. That's a lesson for many leaders watching. Um, now, of course, in terms of leadership, I know that the M&A uh, area, mergers and acquisition for Wisfus, that is something that you have a lot of responsibility over. Could you give us a little sense of that? So beyond the financials, if you're going to make a purchase of a another organization, what are some of the other considerations that you, in your role, with your purview, well, that you take into account? Yeah, it's a great question. I would say there, there's a lot to it. And, you know, and just as, as background for WISFIS, in the last 10 years from 2010 to, uh, to this year, we've uh, acquired nine businesses. Um, I would say four traditional banks, three fee-based businesses, and one that's uh, a trust and branch type businesses 10 years ago. So um, what that has enabled us to do is build a very strong playbook across the organization, you know, from leadership 
to all of our divisions, particularly customer facing business lines and our technology and platforms uh, to build the experience to know how to handle these. And I think that's one of the most important things we do. But when we look for an acquisitions, you know, many companies look for them purely for the growth or for the financial aspect. And clearly that needs to be there. But for us, for WISFIS, and, you know, I didn't mention this on your first question, the acronym WISFIS we use as our mission to, to represent we stand for service. It is one of the most important hallmarks of who we are. It's what our associates know us to be and how we, we approach our, our roles, both customer facing and internally. Service is a, a, a key attribute. And then uh, ultimately highly engaged customers. And we actually work with the Gallup organization on both. And we've worked with them for 20 years now continuing to improve our engagement with our associates and our customers. So for us, when we look to acquire another organization or merge with another organization, it's really important that the values, the capabilities, and those philosophies are, are similar, or there would be too much challenge in onboarding both the associates and customers. So for us, it's ensuring that there's value beyond the financials, there's strategic value, and that we can serve those new sets of customers, either existing in that footprint or expanded, in the same way we do today without compromising what is most important to us. And that takes a tremendous amount of analytics on the front end as we go through the process of a due diligence before we make the decision to go forward with an acquisition. So that's a very interesting perspective because in theory, I guess, what you're saying is you might end up paying a little bit more based on what you know the financial impact will be instantly because you're also bringing in a service level that your customers or your stakeholders will be very pleased with. So yes, we'd be willing to. I think we don't have to because I think the banks that we merge with, if you will, become a part of us. And they see the value of what that value can bring in the future together. And so it's really, while price is always important, it's there are other factors that are just as important around the growth and the success of the business model going forward. So we found ourselves in many cases, and most recently with our largest acquisition when we acquired Beneficial Bank in, in Philadelphia, which was 15 times larger than any other acquisition we had ever done, was... We didn't have to pay a, a significant premium because the value created together and in the future justified the opportunity. Got it. Now, of course, when you make a decision like that, especially one of that size and scale, you've got the additional challenge of integrating all those systems, all those processes, two different organizations trying to marry. How do you manage the business disruption during that change? How do you ensure that the risk you've already calculated doesn't start to accelerate just through the integration? Yeah, the, those are all challenges that I would say from the experience that I mentioned from those nine acquisitions, we've, we've definitely had lessons learned, right? There's been challenges through those years of what to do, what not to do, and how to continue to do those better. And, and in fact, each and every one of those acquisitions ends with a, a lesson learn exercise that actually takes a couple months to ensure there's a feedback loop to that playbook to make sure we're better. So first and foremost, having that playbook and having that experience and trust in the organization that we can do this is most important when it comes to change management. The other is, and I mentioned this earlier, is that highly engaged associate base. There, when you have highly engaged associates, change management, while challenging, is always a little bit easier. The trust is higher, the communication and connectivity across the organization in there. But to maintain that requires continual communication. And one of the expressions we used in our, our last acquisition was provide them content or context when you're commuting every week. So that either if there's new information, share it. If there's not inf new information, still have the dialogue open and give them more context around the content and make sure they're connected. They constantly know where we are and that we're all moving in the same direction and having that level of excitement. I would say that is one of the most important things. From a customer perspective, one of the things we've learned, and this works in particular for a bank, but we, we understand this works beyond, is that when you announce you're acquiring a bank, there's real people involved. There's the, the employees of the future 
you know, that, that bank that we will become our associates and there's their customer base. And what we've learned is it takes about a year for both those employees and customers to get acclimated with the concept of being acquired. And now to, to reduce the stress in that environment, we make sure all those uh, associates or future associates of ours know that they have an opportunity in the new bank <clears throat> so that when they're facing their customers and their customers say, how are you doing? They can say, I'm doing good. I get it. I know what's going on. And those customers stick around for that. And so that what that does is give us a year to, to take our time and systematically understand the changes that need to be made, both operationally and technologically, to connect those wires. For me, an acquisition is basically taking a thousand wires from one company and finding the right wire in the other one and making sure they're all connecting. So when you flip that switch, nothing breaks. Because if it does, it affects your, your associates and your customers. And I think we take that extra time to ensure that smooth transitions where we've seen others sometimes want to get through that very quickly and to start getting those benefits. And sometimes that's detrimental to, the, to both, again, their employees and their customers. Such a smart approach to the challenge. And I really like what you were saying about content and context. And if I can drill into that a little bit, like communicating relentlessly, of course, is so important. There's nothing worse, especially when you're in a new family where everyone goes quiet, right? You need to have that relentless communication. But what to me is fascinating is the context piece, because I guess what you're really saying is it's, it's constantly explaining the why. We're doing this. Here's what we're doing. We've communicated it fully. But now on top of that, here's why we're doing it. That way, everyone is with you on the communication journey. That's absolutely right. And for us, we have such a, a, a unique culture that we've cultivated over years that, you know, a lot of people and a lot of businesses say culture is important and, and theirs is unique. Having been a business consultant and having been at WISFIS for four and a half years now, I can say that is absolutely unique. And so it's a lot of the time is, is demonstrating to the expanded customer base and associate base is who we really are and what it means to live within our culture of standing for service and open communication, uh, candid dialogue, and that we, we are, you know, invest in growth and development. And a lot of that time is showing both the new customers and associates who we are, what we do, and, and as importantly as who we are as an organization is who we are as leaders. Uh, show, putting names to faces, having, you know, putting up videos on the internet site so they can hear you and, and creating that opportunity to connect personally. So it's not this, you know, corporate acquisition and who knows what's gonna happen. It's, it's a team approach. And the last one we did we rented out a convention center, brought a couple hundred people from both organizations into the, into the room and said, here's your counterpart, start talking. And, and you know, it, it's a little um, different. People aren't used to that, but it turns out at the end of the day being very valuable for everyone. Very much so, my goodness. And of course, every, uh, every acquisition, every expansion, it's a form of transformation for your organizations. And you've touched really nicely on how you handle the people side. What about support and systems? How much thinking goes into that when you're going through this relentless series of transformations? So versus the front line, what do you think about, what do you consider when it comes to support and systems process? Yeah, so I would say it, it, all of those questions are embedded into our culture. You don't get to be 188 years old. And remember, where that was when the seventh president, we're now at the 45th or maybe 46th president. This was before electricity, before the, the Civil War, before everything that we can conceive of. This bank has survived. So to the art of the pivot, you need to be able to constantly adapt, constantly learn and grow, and constantly put your customers and your associates first to be able to do that. So it is so embedded in our culture. You know, the way I jokingly say this is, you know, as the CFO of a 188 year old bank, you wake up every day saying, not on my watch, right? I have some significant legacy to protect and honor to make sure that we're doing the right thing. And so that is really embedded. And, and one of the things I, I was really proud about a couple of years ago is that we were one of the first banks to bring our general ledger 
into the cloud environment. And we did that with Oracle and, and Grant Thornton. And, and you know, it was, it was a great moment. And we won an award by Oracle for the implementation to be able to say, we're at the time, we're a 185-year-old bank who's now gone to the cloud. I mean, I just think that's an amazing example. And so it's part of who we are. And in fact, just to bridge the, the Cash Connect back, one of the unique values of Cash Connect is that entrepreneurial uh, spirit of innovation and all that goes on there. And we learn from it and we bring that back into the, the core bank to, to remind us how to think differently. And as part of this most recent acquisition, when we acquired Beneficial the combined footprint was about 120 branches. When banks usually combine, they usually reduce their branch count for overlap. And that would have been typically about 10 branches. What we did is we de we saw the trends a couple of years ago of you know lower transaction to the branches, customers using the branch differently. And we went a little bit further and we got ahead of the curve and we reduced that branch count all the way down to 90. And we were able to do that without disrupting our customers. But what that did was allow us to save a, a, a good amount of uh, cost each year that we have now spent, you know, three years strategizing and implementing, investing this money into new technologies for one, our customers to have a better experience and our serve, uh, associates to be able to serve them better. And this is a multi-year a journey that we internally call delivery transformation, which is basically melding our physical and digital footprint and our ATM network all together for a seamless um, best-in-class service for our customers. Uh, and you're right, you've got to meet the customers where they are. It does. I'm going to give you an outsider question now. This is my ignorant outsider question. I live in the Boston area and I can't believe how many bank branches are on every single street. They're all permanently empty and yet they're open, lights on, and I just don't get it. I heard a rumor at some point, it's basically just almost like an advertising presence. You've decided that that money is better spent elsewhere, namely out there digitally and in the cloud. Yeah, I think it's a combination because for us, we stand for service. We do need to be where the customers are and want to be. And what we found, I think there's a perception that some folks use branch only, some folks use mobile or internet only. And in fact, for the most part, most people use all channels. They just use them differently. So for us, the, the branch is great advertising. It's a great position to demonstrate, particularly in our community, that we are the local brand to serve you. It's When people want to open an account or start a loan process, yes, it's easy to start online, but most folks want to talk to somebody while they're doing it. And then secondarily, I almost liken it to the Genius Bar at Apple. You can buy an app phone anywhere, but where do you go when you got a problem? You go to the Apple store. And so most are now using that branch location for times of um, need, not for, for cash checking. They can do that with their phone or withdraw cash. You can do that anywhere. It's really those more complex situations, and that's where we spend a lot of our time. All right, our time is almost up, but I've got two final questions for you. So briefly, when you think about the processes that you put into place across your ever-changing organization, do you feel like the speed of change has altered? Do you feel like everything is accelerating the entire time? Or are you very comfortable with the steady pace when it comes to the changing processes? It's absolutely speeding up. And part of our delivery transformation, when we're adding these products and service to our customers, it's also to change the architectural design in the background so that the speed to market of a new technology can be much quicker. What used to be 18 months to 24 months now could be six months. Most of the applications people use, either socially or business-wise, didn't exist a year ago. So for a bank, we need to be able to bring them into our environment and, and be prepared to provide them to our customers, but in a way there's control and discipline to protect them and keep their information, their money safe. And so as importantly of providing what's needed today is setting up that infrastructure to provide for the new applications and services that do not exist yet. Fantastic. And now my last question to you. Uh, 2020 was, well, let's just call it a momentous year for so many reasons. Many people would just like to delete it. Uh, but how are you feeling about 2021? So we are feeling positive. 
uh, I think tests like 2020 test the resiliency of many aspects of our lives. And for WISFIS, it really tested the resiliency of what's core to us, our business model, our ability to serve our customers. And as we always do, we start with putting our associates first. And to see them thrive this year, to be able to work in ways that we never imagined a year ago, and to be as or if not more productive in this environment, really inspires us, but teaches us that we are able to continually change and evolve when we plan for it and when we don't plan for it. And to see the positivity right now across our organization, even though we're seven plus months into a pandemic, is really inspiring. That's great to hear. And thank you so much for your insight and your stories as well. Dominic Canuso, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mark. Good to see you. The Art of the Pivot is brought to you by Signavio.